Well, I was knocking around with one of the goal umpires, uh, Jay Christensen, in the, in the 80s, and he always asked me to come down because I was always running and that. Anyway, I thought, I'll come down and keep the peace with him. And I never intended to come back after the first night because I thought, oh, I've done him a favour. Anyway, when Ron Bucky came in after the uh, training and said, look, keep running like that, you can run league footy. And I thought, oh, well, this sounds pretty good. So, yeah, and that, I was back there the next night. So. Yeah, oh, well, I guess playing for so long too. You know, I knew, I knew when to run and when not to run. And, uh, yeah, Barry McKenzie was my first coach and I, I'm indebted to Baz because he really, he looked after me. Well, I, I, I never expected to umpire league footy <coughs> full stop. You know, I just thought, well, I'll, I'll go down. What, whatever happens, happens. Uh, yeah, I was pretty lucky in my first league game to uh, to be looked after too by uh, Ken O'Driscoll and Mike Ball as the field umpire. So I was in I was in pretty good company. Well, yeah, we were nominated at the end of each or well, the start of each season as to. Uh, we'd go on the panel uh, and they would just pick four or five blokes from here and uh, I was in the right place at the right time because when I first started the blokes on the uh, VFL panel, five of them retired at the end of the year so, so I was pretty lucky to you know, be in the right place at the right time. Yeah, Bernie Roberts and I, here we yeah. Go. yeah, so that was, that was a big, good, good fun. Yeah. The only different part really was you pointed the, the way they were going to kick the ball, not you, you didn't point and then back off sort of thing. So. But other than that, no, it was just like a soccer pitch. Yeah, I think it was about 30,000. Yeah, so. But it was a real bad night weather-wise. So, no, it was good. Well, not a lot, it's just that... You, you're out there with the best, and that was that was probably the last of the best state of origin games. You know, once Malthouse got hold of his players, he didn't want them to play, so but everyone was available. Yeah, you know, and you stand, you know, you've got Ablett one side, Brerett and the other, Matera, Worsfold, those sort of guys. They all wanted to play state footy, which was good. Now, I, I was going to give it away in 88 when she first got cancer, and I thought, you know, she, she just made sure that she wanted me to keep going because I needed an outlet. And uh, yeah, it was virtually from the first year till the end of my career was before she passed away. So yeah, had a, had a lot. But the support I got from you know all the everybody, not just individuals, just collectively the whole association was something that I'll treasure forever. Yeah. Well, football's looked after a man by the name of Tig Burgesson pretty well too. He's umpiring his 150th game this afternoon as a boundary umpire. He never stops running, and neither does the man talking to him, John O'Neill. Thanks a lot, Trev. Well, Tig, uh, yes, 150 games is a great effort. Yes, John, it's taken me a few years to get there, but yeah, I'm quite happy, and, uh, and, and it's been a good game of footy too to be involved in. Yes, certainly. <clears throat> well, Trevor Jenkins said to me, you know, we, we want to talk to you at half time. So I thought, oh, well, they'll come, they'll come down and get the vision, whatever. Anyway, everybody, both sides are in position and I'm standing on the boundary, you know, getting spoken to. And I, so I had to cut the interview short, which I felt ordinary, but they, they were good about it, you know. Now, uh, from, yeah, the, the classical sort of measuring stick from fitness and the football has been the 15 minute run. And uh, I can call you normally guys that do around 10, 10 and a half laps. From an umpiring um, sort of perspective, what sort of uh, distance are you getting? Oh, about four and a half k's, John, so. Yeah. About 11 laps, is it? Now, Titch, uh, what about reports, mate? Uh, what are you like? You bit uh, quick on the book there? Oh, I'll try and stay out of that, John. Do you? Yeah, so. <laughs> Look, uh, go. yeah, on behalf of all of us, uh, well done on the 150th. Thanks, and, um, Come Thanks, Thanks sir. Thanks, uh, sir. We've got to let him get back to the game. <laughs> He's off and running already. <laughs> He's a good man. Yeah, it was good. It was good fun. Well, the first one, they got about 35,000 there, I think, the first. And then uh, started to dwindle up after that. Then they... They've canned it now because blokes just don't want to come out and play a one-off and saw for three or four months, you know. But no, they were good. They were good fun and it was for, it was for a good cause, you know, for Telethon. But I just think, as I said before, the friendships far outweigh any personal achievements, you know, because they last forever. The achievement just lasts for a couple of weeks or whatever, you know. But no, in, in, it's probably one of the best things I've ever done, you know, apart from playing footy and... 
and being footy all my life, so it's it's been a real bonus. Yeah, no, it's been good. Oh yeah, I never imagined it that that I would even do a league game, let alone nearly nearly 200. So, but no, it's been a, a great journey, and it's been special to me, and I'll treasure forever. Yeah? And to be in the company now of all the other Hall of Famers is just sets it right off to completes the the journey. So it's been good. But no, so he came down, yeah, as I said before, about 38 and just amazing, amazingly uh, fit looking man. Uh, we're all quite young in comparison. There were a few older ones there, but they were kind of coming to the end of their career. He was just starting at 38, which is quite amazing. Uh, he was always professional uh, to the T, to the you know, everything with perfect white shoes, everything was always laid out. He had those. Uh, Boundary umpiring shorts that were painted on, I'm sure, and uh, always had his Morris Mead looking hair, the big gold locks. Look, I, I was really fortunate to, um, when I came down to umpire with Tig, um, and Tig was a, a wonderful individual in the fact that he would, he took me under his wing, um, and he helped me immensely, um, and that's my first memory that Tig was a very um, a helpful person and he would go out of your way. It didn't matter who you were, he would help everybody in the group. Um, that was just his nature. In that we had, in the early days, we probably had uh, nine or ten of us on the panel um, trying out for a game. There was only nine games for the year and only two boundary umpire system. So pretty much had 18 spots up for grabs for nine people or ten people. So if you got two or three games, that was a great year. And as you said, every year you pretty much were trying out for the following year. You never got a contract to say you're on for more than that year. So every year was always that nervous wait until you did the next time trial to see if you're in the panel again for the, for the following year. Uh, Tig, it's great to see that you've made it up onto the Hall of Fame. Um, it's a wonderful achievement um, and a well deserved. And I mean, to see your name up there just epitomises what boundary umpiring is about and also what Hall of Fame is about. Yeah, well done, Tig. I'm looking forward to uh, having a drink with you. Uh, well deserved. There's many people that I've uh, talked to that are so happy for you and know that you're, will be at, you'll be absolutely beaming on the day, on the night. Uh, I won't mention all the names because I'm sure I'll miss a few, but uh, definitely a lot of the guys have got back to me and said I'd love to also send a message of congratulations to you. So well done, mate.